Hi, I'm glad to have you again coming in around to my channel to watch the video. Thank you so much for always coming around. I appreciate all my subscribers and everybody that has been checking out my videos on scholarship on how to study abroad and opportunities, international opportunities globally. Thank you, thank you. You are the real MVP. Yeah, I thank you for the support, the comments, the questions, the reaching out that uh, you've been reaching out to me over the time. Thank you so much. So uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you um, my about my first ever trip to Europe. Yeah, because uh, it's it's remained a very, very big memory, a very, very big experience and beautiful experience for me. And um, when I have the opportunity to share my experience, I do share it uh, because it can motivate somebody. And uh, sometimes I use it to also motivate myself too, because uh, from Ibadan in Nigeria, sitting down and uh, of course I don't have any parents that can, I don't have parents that can sponsor me, to, that can fund me abroad. So it's a sheer favor and uh, opportunity meeting some little work and little effort being put together, uh, open the doors. So, and I believe that uh, most people, most people can also be beneficiary of this kind of opportunity. If you come across the information and you put the little effort you need to put to meet it. So how did the story of my first trip to Europe happen? Yeah, my very ever first trip to Europe was to Germany. Yeah, Germany, my Germany, probably I should call Germany my second country now. It's my beloved country. Yeah. Being a beneficiary, I benefited so much from Germany, from German-funded scholarship, from German government-funded scholarship, from private organization-funded scholarship in Germany. I benefited so, so much from Germany. So I'm always grateful for the opportunity to come across information about Germany. And particularly, by, I've been a, a, a huge beneficiary of the German Academic Exchange Service. German Academic Exchange Service, uh, popularly called DAAD is the largest education funding body in the whole world. Every year they give thousands and thousands of scholarships to foreigners, international students, even people that are working, lecturers, professors, young academics, PhD students, master students to come to Germany to study or to come and have research experience. Uh, so, and you can benefit from it. And there are different programs that they have that focus on different opportunity. The reason why I branched a little into that is that because my very first opportunity to come to Germany came on the platform of DHAD. Yeah, my very first experience, my very first trip to Germany was to Technical University of Braunschweig. Technical University of Braunschweig. Braunschweig is towards the northern part of Germany. Um, it's a fairly small city, not very big. Uh, the population of the city was about uh, I think less than 150,000 population around that. And in fact, you can almost walk the entire city. However, as small as the city is, they have very superb, efficient transport system. The buses are always on time. The light trains, which they call tram, they are always walking. They have a train station where you can travel to other cities. You can take trains to other cities. There was no, there is no airport at the, at the city because it's really a small city. So we came in through Hanover, which is a bigger city, not far from Brunswick. With, when I flew from Lagos, I landed in Hanover. Then we had, had a road trip. On, on that, my first trip, I had a road trip from Hanover to Brunswick. But the second time I went to Brunswick, I remember I did a train trip. I went from Hanover Airport to Brunswick by train. So my experience was so so good i and it remained a very cherished memory for me and um how did i get to go to Brunswick? how did i get to go to germany it was also an information that i got from a friend yeah the person just told me about um uh, a program that the, she has applied for in the past and uh, so we decided to apply so i applied and um the story is a little interesting because when the decision came, uh, I was initially sent, I was first of all sent a rejection letter. Every other person that are selected, accepted to the program, they have been sent their invitation. The ones that were invited, the ones that were rejected, were sent a rejection letter. And fortunately or otherwise, I, my application was rejected. So I was sent an application, I said, sorry, 
um, unfortunately we cannot select you for this program so it was very very painful for me because i was seriously dreaming of going to germany i, I was imagining oh, how will it be being in germany so when i received that email it was like it was like heartbreak it's like dashed my hope of going to europe of trying traveling to germany so it happened that we bought um, I try to take my mind off it, try to encourage myself. Yeah, because uh, actually, like two weeks earlier or a week earlier, I received a positive uh, outcome for an application for a program I was supposed to attend in Malawi. So I was using that one to console myself. Okay, even if I didn't get the accepted for the for a program in Germany, at least I have Malawi coming ahead a few months time. So I tried, of course, it was painful to me, really, really painful. I think that was my very first real rejection in applying for international program. And um, because it's Germany and it's fully funded, I was already dreaming, I was eager. If this thing should just come true, oh, that's a big dream come true for me. So, and unfortunately, yeah, I was, the rejection came in and then after like two days, I started getting over it and then started uh, moving on, by adjusting my mind to it. But something interesting happened. Exactly one week after they sent me the rejection mail, I just received another email and they wrote in the email, blah, 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 are you, um, would like to inform you that uh, one person dropped from the program and uh, we want to extend invitation to you if you are still interested in applying. I say, what if I'm still interested in applying? Oh, I don't need to think about this one. I am more and more and more than interested in applying. So I quickly replied them, I'm interested in applying. I was so happy. I was super, super happy, especially because I've been originally rejected one week ago. In fact, I was already getting over the rejection and suddenly the miracle happened. Something led to you, something and uh, I was accepted, you know, and sometimes that could be the little margin between being accepted or being rejected sometimes. That means my, initially my application was very close to being accepted but was rejected. So it needed somebody, just one person to drop off and for me to be able to come in. So uh, little, little differences, little, little things like that can make the difference. So the, the short, long story short is that I got the email, I was accepted and I was excited. So. I started the process of application. I've never been to any embassy until that time for any interview or anything. So my very first interview at any embassy was the German embassy. Uh, the previous uh, program I was going to, which was in Malawi, does not need any embassy interview, it's just a visa on arrival. I just get the issue was the visa on arrival. But this time around, the first interview was ever interview to travel was German embassy. So I gather all my documents, everything, put everything together, then went to the German embassy and um, it was everything went nice. In fact, I remember I had a pleasant experience with the lady that interviewed me. Very pleasant Nigerian lady. And uh, she asked me, have you ever been out, traveled out of Nigeria before? Oh, I said, yes, 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 I've been to Malawi. Oh, she said, no, that she's not talking about Africa. She's talking about uh, other parts of the world, okay? So I said, uh, no, this will be my first experience out of Africa. And uh, okay, he said, she asked me, how did you know about the program? I guess she was trying to find out to be sure this guy is genuine or and the rest. So I told her, we got the information on the internet and uh, I put in an application. I wrote a scientific abstract, which I submitted, I think alongside with the motivation letter, then the selection was done. So I told, told and uh, the application was open to uh, people from all over the world and I think about 40 people were selected from all over the world to participate in the program. It was a summer school, so I got selected uh, with, I think, uh, two or three of other friends. So, and then uh, that was the, so the lady, oh, that's beautiful. In fact, I remember we interacted a little where the consular officer that uh, interviewed me because I got to ask her, okay, now you're working at the German embassy. Do you speak German? Do you write German? She said, yes, she does. So how do you get to, she said, Interestingly, she finished, she had a bachelor's education at Obafemi Agurulo University, Lefe, Nigeria. And she said when she was in school, she used to take German less, like, classes, and she just take German classes. And uh, not part of her program, she was just, she just took interest in German language and she was taking German class. 
and then she, that's how she learned German language. And that German language is now very instrumental to her working at the German embassy, the German consulate in Lagos in Nigeria. So we interacted like that. She verified my documents. I presented all my invitation letter, my um, flight uh, uh, ticket, the, the booking for my flight, the hotel, my health insurance, and she said she did everything. Okay, see, okay, and um, you will hear from us in the in a couple of days. And interestingly, because I was going on a scholarship, the German embassy also has an interesting thing. When you have a scholarship from a German government or a German organization, they will automatically cancel the visa fee for you. They will waive it for you. So I didn't have to pay the visa fee. They won't collect the visa fee for you. They will just give you a receipt of 000 naira. So because I think that's part of the German, the generosity of the German government. I think they believe if you are going to study or going on research or scholarship, Part of their contribution is not to even be taking money visa application from you again so that's how it was wait for me and then from there we started and then we flew to germany i remember when we were, I, we were going to germany we flew through which airline again I, I i'm not sure i can fully remember the here yes we flew through air france yeah so we stopped over at paris uh charles de gaulle international airports in paris then from paris to hanover then it was a good good experience at the summer school then we had some dinner lectures practical sessions beautiful beautiful experience and uh, that's uh that's uh, summarizes my very very first uh trip outside of africa and uh, it was on a fully funded scholarship thanks to the german government through uh, German Academic Exchange Services, DAD, that have been generous in helping people from all over the world, especially from developing countries, to have access to uh, advanced training, education, and uh, scholarship opportunity that may, might not otherwise be available. So I have been a beneficiary of it, and uh, um, this is uh, just to acknowledge that uh, many opportunities are out there. As much as the German government is doing, there are many other governments around the world that also give opportunity. I know Australian government also support people from developing countries uh, and other parts of the world. Um, Netherlands also have Orange Knowledge Program, which they award every year. Australia Award is there every year. The DAAD is there every year. So what I'm saying in essence is that we, we, when we get the information, we should just make attempts. Uh, what we hold ourselves is to make attempts to put in the little effort or whatever effort we need to put in to attempt it, then, then we can leave the rest to, to um, the process and then hope that everything works together for good. And if it happens that you are rejected, don't ever give up. Do it again, apply again, look for that opportunity again. This is what I've learned and this is the conclusion I've come to. If you don't give up, even if you are rejected once, twice, two times, three times, eventually an opportunity will come that you will be accepted for. I have friends that were rejected like the first four international opportunities they applied for. But after that, they have received tons and tons of scholarships and funding and international opportunities. And I don't think our case is different from most other people. We just need to put effort, look for information and do what we need to do. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video once again for stopping by my channel i give information on scholarships study abroad or global opportunities uh, please come to my channel regularly to look for my new video but most importantly i please kind, kindly subscribe to the channel and switch on your notification button so that you know each time i post a new video thank you so much love you and see you later